Hello, my guitar friends. Welcome to Positive Grids YouTube channel. My name is Andy Ferreira, and in this very short video, I'm going to teach you how to get a sound with Bias FX2 standalone. Join me in my computer screen as I'll walk you guys through the step by step process. First things first, you got to load up the software. After you've fired up Bias FX2, you're going to click on the gear icon and move on to audio settings. The very first setting you're going to choose is your output device, and it's very important that you choose your audio interface right here. Then you move on to the type of output, and I recommend you stick with stereo unless your system does not allow for stereo playback. And then you select the outputs on your interface that are connected to your headphones or speaker monitors. Bias FX2 has an output check test button built in, so you can check if there's sound coming up. If you don't hear anything, you might want to check your system for issues. Now let's move on to the input section. Once again, you want to set your audio interface as your input device. If you're using only one input for your guitar, you want to leave this at mono. And the input channel is going to correspond with the input on your interface. Now try playing something with your guitar and see if the input check green meter moves. If that bar does not move while you play, you might want to check your system because there may be an issue. Now for the last section of the audio settings. You want to optimize your sample rate and buffer size to make sure you do not overload your CPU. For sample rate, I would definitely recommend you sticking with 44100 or 48000. Those are the most common sample rates and anything above that may overload your CPU. The audio buffer size will determine the latency of the software. Anything between 512 and 256 samples is usually a pretty good place where you cannot feel the latency at all. Now let's talk about MIDI. You can find all of those settings right here on the gear icon and then on MIDI settings. For detailed instructions on MIDI setup, please refer to how to use MIDI control with Bias FX2 standalone version. Now let's fine tune input and output settings. Your input level really affects the gain and saturation of your tone. Here are some tips on how to optimize it. For both electric guitars and basses, you might want to use the high Z input on your interface. And then you adjust the input gain, trying to maintain optimal level and avoid clipping. Guitars with very strong pickups or active pickups for that matter may have too much output for your interface to handle. In that case, look for a pad button to attenuate the input so that you avoid clipping. Now let's talk about automatic input detection. To use this wonderful feature, you've got to click on this auto button right here. And when you do bias effects, you're going to read the intent of how you play. This is when you strike your guitar the hardest. The program will set an optimal level and then you click on lock. Now your input set is not going to move. You always want to keep an eye on your input and output meters to make sure they're not clipping. Well, my guitar friends, this concludes our audio setting guide for Bias FX2. If you haven't done that already, please hit the like button and subscribe to Positive Grid's YouTube channel so you stay up to date with everything that's new in PG's world. Now go enjoy creating music with your optimized settings in Bias FX2. I've been Andy Ferreira and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.